Good morning. Today we're going to spend a few minutes looking at the cost of employee turnover, how those costs impact organizations throughout the world, and how we can use award and recognition products to stem some of this tide and save a lot of costs for organizations by helping them retain their employees. What is employee turnover? Simply put, it is the number of employees who choose to leave an organization within a given year, regardless of the reason they leave. There are two reasons or two causes to leave an organization, involuntary and voluntary. Involuntary, simply put, your employer wanted you to leave. A number of reasons, poor performance, absenteeism, you violated a policy somewhere. Uh, these are involuntary turnovers. Voluntary, this is where we can use award and recognition products or all types of recognition to cut down the rate of voluntary turnover. Voluntary being described as you chose to leave. You didn't feel appreciated. Uh, you went to another company where you felt you know better compensation was available for you. But again, these are the, the voluntary turnover aspect is where we can use award and recognition products to help reduce the amount of voluntary turnover. Now we're very blessed today. I'm able to uh, call on some friends of mine who are way out there in a galaxy far, far away. And we're going to see how employee turnover impacts them and how they deal with it. Uh, I think you'll see maybe they need a little bit of help and uh, we're going to send them a copy of this video when we're done. Uh, I think they could really use some help in working on their turnover. It seems your approach to motivating the troops is not working. Now, you could explain turnover through basically what we call a systems theory. And employees are living things, organizations, living things. They're all interrelated. The components all work together. Um, nobody can function independently. Everything is dynamic. Everything, one relates to the other. All right, so systems that are not running smoothly contribute to greater rates of employee turnover. Now, turnover obviously has cost. As we see here, uh, $11 billion a year in the United States is the cost of turnover. These are the visible costs, the things that you can actually quantify on a balance sheet. So if somebody's terminated, there's a severance package. We're going to have to advertise to fill that position. Uh, while that position is vacant, you have temporary employees. You have overtime of current employees to fill that void. Your recruiting cost. Um, you're going to pay the cost for a lot of candidates on uh, national job searches to be able to come and be interviewed. Just the cost of the interview itself, the time for HR to be able to run background checks, a lot of times that's a third party cost. Again, the cost for the organization to meet and select, hiring, orientation, uh, relocation, signing bonuses, all these visible costs can be quantified and actually placed on a balance sheet. You die. The threat of Darth Vader choking me doesn't motivate me as much as going into a prize draw to win a holiday for two on tattooing. I find your look of faith disturbing. Now again, we talked about visible cost of turnover. There are hidden cost of turnover. Now these are the ones that it's going to be hard to find on a balance sheet. But nonetheless, just because they don't show up on a balance sheet as dollars and cents cost, they are costs that exist nonetheless. Productivity loss. A person in your department is leaving, um, you know, there's a certainly a sadness in many cases that they're going. Uh, you miss that person's guidance, that person's tutelage, and so that department may not be working as effectively as when they had a mentor and a leader there with them. Again, follows quickly into the erosion of morale. You know, you see a mentor, somebody that you've look, looked up to leaving the organization, uh, your morale is not as good as it, as it was when that person was there with you. Uh, disengaged employees, people who know that they are not satisfied. They're not going to be as productive as somebody who comes to work, is satisfied, and, and does a good job every day for the organization. Somebody in sales, and you know we all can relate to that, simply lost sales for the organization. I've always said, if your number one gunfighter goes to work for your competition, that's not a good thing. Disruption of workflow. Again, it's just like taking, as we talked in systems theory, you take a cog out of that puzzle it's not going to operate as efficiently. Loss of credibility. Uh, senior people leaving organizations, 
others who work with you begin to wonder why are the senior leaders leaving the organization so again that is a direct loss of credibility and credibility in a lot of cases is all we really have in this industry we are as good as our last order so that credibility factor is huge specifically within our, within our industry um, how do the remaining employees feel they see people jumping ship uh, are they more inclined to think mm, I want to go with you and again the next thing is the the inefficiency of new people you bring them in you've got to train them you've got to get them up to date on your system so obviously they're not going to be as efficient as the person they replaced for a period of time now again consequences of turnover as you can see here loss of organizational values we talked about losing mentors causing morale within the organization to go lower which is lost productivity which equates to what all the bean counters want to talk about lost revenue so you can see how we start slow and we build and when we build to that big crescendo unfortunately the big thing that we build to is lost revenue well it's always dark side this and dark side that there's never a bright side never a thank you you've done a great job or finish this on time and we'll put you into a prize draw to win a tie fighter for the weekend <sighs> If you don't pull your finger out, you'll feel the force of my lightsaber. Very motivational, not. Now, productivity, as the slide says, is lost in four ways. So, employees, as they're leaving an organization, are not going to be as productive. Nor are the short-term employees which come in to replace them. You bring a new person in, obviously they've just got to learn. I, I always joke the first thing you better learn is where the ladies room or the men's room is. So you have that learning curve and, and the more intense the job the longer the learning curve is going to be. So during that learning curve period they may only be operating at a 40, 50, 60 percent efficiency. So again you're losing productivity there. New employees disrupt peers and supervisors. I think we all can relate to this. Somebody new comes into the office and for the first three weeks it's a hundred questions a day where's this where's that how do we do this here what does this mean why do I see this on my screen again it's just them acclimating themselves to the organization but all that disruptive behavior and again it's not intended to be disruptive they're learning but it does have the effect of disrupting those within the group now the last is was we've talked before you can quantify lost sales when you have somebody particularly in sales positions who go elsewhere who go to your competitors what how much of that book of business did they walk across the street with so again as you see here productivity can account for up to seventy percent of your turnover cost now again we like to do some studies and we, we've really spent a lot of time in these webinars going out and looking outside of just an industry focus and getting a lot of scholarly works associated with being able to quantify some cost Here's MIT talking about uh, the cost of turnover if you bring in a new employee could be upwards of 150 percent so if you were paying somebody a hundred thousand dollars to do a job you're going to be paying a hundred and fifty thousand dollars to replace that person with a new hire and again that's not because you're going to be increasing salary but that's all the things that we've looked at before the productivity loss the disruption to your other uh, employees within the organization so it's pretty easy to say it's 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 a little better to pay a hundred percent than to pay a hundred and fifty percent um, Bliss and Associates, a, a large consulting firm that does a lot of management consulting, they put the cost potentially as high as 250%. And Gallup here, we look at the survey, 53% of employees left because they did not feel the uh, use of recognition products or praise to make them feel like they wanted to stay with an organization. So over half of the people that leave an organization leave that organization because they didn't feel worth. Your workers do not feel valued. As a result, their performance is unacceptable. I want to be treated like an individual. 20 years of hard service and not so much as a taken out for a Bantha burger. Always the same. I just don't feel valued. Well, I'm thinking of joining the Rebels. I've heard they get discounted shopping vouchers for most major high street stores. Come on, let's ditch this and go shoot some Jowers. There again, we talked about Bliss as a consulting organization. 
just looking again at the cost of uh, employees leaving the organization and it's worth mentioning again potentially up to hundred and fifty percent of that employee's salary is spent to replace them and that high number over half of the employees re responding left an organization due to a lack of incentives lack of recognition lack of praise Let's look at a couple case studies in terms of real dollar cost. Here we have in a hospital with 1,200 employees. It would be an, a moderate size hospital. Assuming a turnover rate of 2% a month, you're losing 288 employees a year. All the costs thrown in, that cost that hospital $2.9 million. Now imagine walking into an HR director at a hospital and saying, you know what, let's look at an awards and recognition program because do you realize if your turnover rate is this, you're costing yourself $2.9 million. Taco Bell. 20% of the stores with the lowest turnover enjoy double the sales and 55% higher profits than the lowest 20% of their stores having the highest turnover. So again, it only makes sense. Long-term employees know their jobs. They do them quicker faster more efficiently they're not in the kitchen trying to figure out how to make a taco they're out serving customers so again happy employees stay around and by keeping those employees as we see here the top 20 percent of the stores in retention had 55 percent higher profits than the 20 percent of the stores at the bottom of the chain again we'll kind of just let you run through this very quickly uh, various costs per turnover depending on various industry supermarkets um, hotel and motel universities um, again just take a look at the average turnover cost per employee so you're able to as you go out and work within within your various client groups be able to say to them you know here's what it's costing you on average to replace a single employee leaving your organization and I can guarantee you that a well-run a well-managed award and recognition program is not going to come anywhere near the cost of just one employee leaving during the course of a year what causes turnover pretty simple I think we would all know these even if I didn't talk about them today lack of proper hiring how many people just you showed up, you filled out a job application, yeah, we'll take you. Whether or not you're qualified or not, we'll take you. Um, some outdated managerial strategies. You know, there's, there's plenty of organizations now that still have a 70s, 70s and 80s mindset to motivating their employees. Lack of team recognition. And again, this is something that we can directly impact by the use of a well-managed award and recognition program. Lack of competitive pay. Again, there are also ways that you can look at the fact that a well-run awards and recognition program may take some of the burden and relief off of always having to give raises. Raises are not always the answer. Now, a lot of times it's praise and recognition in concert with competitive pay. So again, you can use those two things in tandem or an unpleasant work environment. But again, a well-managed award and recognition program will help cut down on these on these factors and again as you've looked at the money as we've gone through here these are real dollars these are huge costs that companies are incurring because they're allowing employees to walk out the door I'm not saying awards and recognition can um, stem all these costs and all these factors but I'm telling you they can take at least two-thirds of them off the table what does my master suggest Go to the Windsor Collection. They can help you. So again, we've got that revolving door. People come and people go. And we have to stem that tide. If you want your organization to consistently be at the top, you need consistency in management, consistency on the production floor. You can't have people coming and going. You can't absorb that cost every time somebody leaves the organization. Whether that's a hard cost or a soft cost, it's a cost nonetheless. So again, we want to make sure that everybody understands the awards and recognition approach to this 
will not stop everybody from leaving an organization. There are people who just want to go for uh, a reason that they feel is compelling, and I don't know that it would matter what you did to them in terms of recognize, recognizing or praising them or giving them a raise. But that's a rare case. Most people feeling appreciated do not want to leave their job, particularly in this environment. It's difficult to find a new job. So again, let's keep people motivated, let's keep people happy, and you'll keep them in your organization.